So with Iran, we'll see what happens. But uh, they've been very hostile. They've truly been the number one uh, provocateur of terror. We have no indication that uh, anything's happened or will happen. But if it does, it will be met, obviously, with great force. We'll have no choice. And we have President Trump making his intentions very clear with Iran that he will act or we will act with great force if necessary. So you have national security officials just wrapping their closed door briefings with Congress on the escalating threat. We shared with both the House and the Senate our strategic campaign, the effort to push back against Iran's malign activity, 40 years of terrorist activity. And so we talked to them about that. We tried to place that or place the recent intelligence in context of that 40 years of history. And we walked through our efforts and our ultimate objective over the past days, which has been to deter Iran. And now let's bring in Congressman Lee Zeldin, who was in this House briefing moments ago. Congressman, I know we can't get you in trouble or anything, but is there anything that you can tell us about what America will do going forward? Well, one, I can reinforce that message that President Trump, the Trump administration, doesn't want war. They don't want a military conflict. Uh, if we were to get attacked, uh, we would defend ourselves. We would do it swiftly. We would do it overwhelmingly. We would defend the United States. Uh, so that, that's an important message for Iran to understand. Just like, remember, around this time two years ago, there was the back and forth between President Trump and Kim Jong-un, and President Trump got criticized because he said if North Korea was to attack the United States, they'd be met with fire and fury. The fact is, whether you're talking North Korea, Iran, or someone else, if you attack the United States, you will be met with fire and fury. But one thing that should not be get, 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 get lost at all in this conversation is that President Trump doesn't want a military conflict. Congressman, it's Kevin Kelly here, and I think you're uh, echoing a lot of American sentiments about how we do not want war, but one of the biggest issues we're going to be facing is Iran's, uh, you know, opposition to Israel, right? I mean, we know that, you know, Israel came out a few months ago and they said, hey, listen, we know that Iran is doing uh, nuclear proliferation possibly, and they did their whole, you know, uh, press conference on that. Then all of a sudden we've seen that Iran has actually build a power vacuum in Iraq. So how do we delicately balance um, Iraq and Israel and, and American interests in not going to war with, uh, you know, Iran? A simple way to look at the situation uh, could be the four instruments of national power. It's the dime principle, diplomacy, information, military, economics. What you see the Trump administration doing more of is placing uh, more of a military option, the M. Uh, on the table, but not for the purpose of using it. That's a last possible option. But that increases the ability to make economic pressure more effective for the information campaign, because there are millions of Iranians who want to take control of their own destiny. Uh, they want a free, stable, prosperous, democratic Iran. That's what millions of them talk about. Uh, and then there's the bilateral and the multilateral diplomacy. The United States, uh, we're talking to not just other countries in the Middle East. We talk to European counterparts. Even Russia and China. Remember, the P5 plus one included Russia and China. Uh, so you have the nuclear bad activities of Iran, the non-nuclear bad activities, and the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal, came up short. With the sunset clauses, with, with flaws in the verification regime, and not dealing with any of the non-nuclear activities. So the president is putting leverage back on the table. The sanctions that are back in place have resulted in a, a reduction for uh, Iran's trade and, and economy. And hopefully with the increased leverage, maybe it's not today. Maybe it's not, you know, the middle of May of 2019. Uh, but we're in a stronger position than the Iranians are, uh, and we have more staying power than they do. We'll be prepared for the worst, uh, but the, what's in the best interest of Iran is to come to the table at some point in the future. That's the better path for them, uh, and there are great consequences for them to continue down the path we've seen them on over the course of the last few years. Congressman, it's Carol Roth. In terms of the concerns that you have, how much of that is related to direct threats against the United States versus threats against our allies? Well, first, let's talk uh, rhetorical. The, the, uh, no one should be giving uh, too much weight to Zarif, the foreign minister in Iran, his Twitter feed and his statements. Uh, th this guy is a terrorist mouthpiece. What we, and, and he might be saying that you know, the United States should be respecting Iran more, that we shouldn't be threatening Iran. Uh, but let's talk about the rhetoric coming out of Iran. For a long time, yes, they call Israel the little Satan, but they're calling the United States the great Satan. 
Uh, they, they chant death to America in their parliament and on their streets during their holidays. They, remember when they uh, held hostage United States sailors and embarrassed them publicly? The United States afterwards, by the way, just said thank you. That was our response. Thank you for releasing them. Uh, but the, the rhetoric, and then followed by the actual actions, ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, when Iran is test firing them, that's not meant for Israel. They're intercontinental ballistic missiles. They're meant for, meant for the United States. What's the worst part of it? It's the hundreds of U.S. soldiers who have died at the hands of the Iranians. Uh, it, it is equipment. It is financial resources, logistics. I've uh, been provided by the RRGC right up to the head of the Iranian regime. We view that as a direct threat. That's not rhetorical. That's actually resulted in blood on the hands of, of these Iranians. Uh, so we're seeing it in many forms. Yes, there's a threat to our allies uh, in that region and around the world. But I see it as a direct threat to the United States, especially when a dead United States service member is sent home. Congressman, thank Congressman you very much. For, John, John I'm going to have to cut you off just because we're short with time, but you will start the next block. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate Happy it. Happy to. Thank you.